All right, we're here again on the scoreboard. Mm. This time Mm-mm. we've got a guest. This time we've got yours truly, ex Brentford, ex Man United youth player as well. You got Josh Bowie in the building. What are you saying, Josh? You saying, man? It's good to be here, man. Thank you for having me. Man. No pleasure, problem. Pleasure, Thank you pleasure. for coming. So, just before we get into the actual, actual nitty gritties, first question: What team do you support? <laughs> <laughs> I don't support no team. I said I don't what do you mean you don't support no team? What team? He's like, like me. No, nah, I'm. I'm more like wherever I go, I support them in it because obviously. Raw. That's how I am in it. So what, what team do you support, like, support like as, as, when you growing up? You used to so obviously when I was at Brentford, I support Brentford, United, <laughs> United. Only team that I don't support is Nat Brady and Holland, isn't it? <laughs> they don't is that shots so. there? <laughs> is yeah. that shots there? All right. Um and when you're playing, who do you say you who would you compare yourself like stylistically that you play like as a yeah, ruler? That's a good question. Um and we've seen you play, so we'll be we'll judge as well. Um, I think <laughs> I think I don't know if you guys remember Ashley Young in these early oh, yeah. days. Yeah, Villa, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, Ashley okay, Young, I, I used to similar body shape. Okay. Um he was quite like good at one v ones early days. Yeah. Obviously he's adapted now, he's he's playing more like a full back role, but I think his early days, Aston Villa. The wing days, Villa yeah, days. Wing days. Yeah, it was, was cold. Still. Do you, do you man agree? Yeah, I do that cross that no one does. <laughs> I used to wonder, yeah, was he not actually bold or he used to shave his head because Later on the line, that like, you're actually I'm, young, I'm the here. stress man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not agree? Yeah, 100%. Man. Yeah, <laughs> I think he's obviously, I don't know how young would have, um, have been at like youth level and stuff, but you seem like you're more skillful, like you like, do more tricks. But maybe at his level, young when he was at his, yeah, yeah he probably he did, did the same thing tricks. as well. It's like Sterling, apparently, he used to do a lot of tricks in the academy as well, mm. but now he don't do tricks like that. But yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And you obviously you played with like people that are known in it. Who would you say is the top two? Should I make it top two? Top two players that you played with? Um, that's a good question. I can't remember. I put probably like obviously I've trained with Slatan, isn't it? So he's probably like the top. Mm. Right, it. <laughs> I've trained with him, and he's just. Is he crazy? He's, he's mad still. So is it? <laughs> some of the stuff that he does is just. Yeah, it's crazy stuff. Like, <laughs> like, I've got a ball here. He's touching that, man. Like, players like Slatan, Juan Mato. Yeah. Their touch man, is quality, man. You can see, crazy. though. Crazy, like, they take pride in it, like. <laughs> they take pride so in it. So, opposite of players like Lukaku. <laughs> 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 we're not even talking. Obviously, there's, there's one story. I'm, let me just, let me say it. One story is, yeah. he's, obviously, Slatan and... Rom was there at the same time, innit? So yeah, I remember. I don't know. You man might have seen it. They used to have... Was it Jokey Banter? It was Jokey Banter. Yeah, so obviously all the time. He's like, Slatan's like, Tim. Rom, what's going on with your touch and that? <laughs> <laughs> you know Rom is? He's a bit like, yeah, I like, love it, man. Come on. Like, he's trying to show his strength and that. But Slatan's big as well. So he said, ah, cool. I'm going to beat it up in the air. Touch it. <laughs> Smacked it up in the air. The rest is history. <laughs> 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 Aye, what, what, what the in front of everyone, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> Aye, I genuinely, in my heart, I felt, I was thinking, damn. That's bro. pressure, though. <laughs> like, you really said, oh, right, come here. Poof. High. <laughs> high, bro. The ball is high. Comes down now. The rest is history, man. That's crazy. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah. People's touch and that is a big part in football. Mm. So I think Slatten's touch, even you see sometimes the way he moves and stuff like that. It wasn't really the skills for me. It was more like his touch, his first touch, his awareness. IQ. Okay. IQ, yeah. And the same for, I, I put one out there, probably. See, man, we really actually ruined him. I have a question for you, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you, do you think, I'd control that same thing that um, he did for I would have, Yeah, I would have controlled that stuff. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't, no. When I How say high that, was it? It was high, bro. Like, I'm not right. like, so that must have slapped it, like. The thing is, like, say my touch ain't going to go... Over there, like, do you oh, so you saying? control it, bro. Maybe it won't be like, <laughs> won't be like, like, like Velcro. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it'll be Messy, in the radar. It be like, yeah, no, it'll be close, but like, not be a madness. Move a little bit. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, like, do you get what I'm saying? His thing. When it goes to the. <laughs> 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 you keep it moving, man. Or tight Lukaku, though. For Good player. Lukaku. <laughs> Good no, player. I, I thought you were the better because I know you played with Scott McTominay, innit? Like, how did the generation talent? 
Scott, yeah, no. Nah, nah. You said it, but the way he, no, the way, yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh, the way he just said it, well, like, he said like, no, he's not. No, he's man, he's one of the best players. The thing is, Scott, Scott is a hard worker, man. He's not yeah. really like, you don't really see the ability he wears like others like Angel, mm. Mason, or I don't know. You don't really see that ability he wears, yeah. but Scott was more like hard, like really hard working and yeah. kind of hundred press ups every day, like yeah. not missing. Okay. Like, that's that's the type of play he was, and obviously his physical so sort of brought that side to his game as well. And that so, do you think like in terms of like people make it from academy or people even get in the academy? Do you think there's other variables that exist, like for example nepot- nepotism, like maybe who don't know family in the club or family connected to the club? Yeah, no, hundred percent, man. Like football's football's it's not as easy as you think obviously like i say it nowadays like you need to have good connections isn't it mm. yeah you need to be good as well but you need to have good connections the right people around you and so yeah like there's definitely that type of i know like I'm not gonna say any names but i know someone that's currently in united because his agent was the same agent as the manager so i was wow. just about to say because one crazy. question he wanted to ask before yeah. was about Nepotism football, touchy thing, but yeah. it happens though. Obviously, from yeah. outside, we always say, Yeah, 100% yeah. It exists. No, it does 100%. But like, it's no denying it. People try and deny it, but it's just <laughs> it's the reality, isn't it? Like, people do whatever they can to, yeah, yeah, of course, 100%. Like, yeah. Even my most name, Lampard, like, that's a lot of West Ham fans don't like him. Cause they thought it was only there because of Red Knight. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but his level's there though. Yeah, Cause yeah, because he proved that. Yeah, he he's meant to be there. He's able to do it, but if there's like a, um, an academy team, yeah, so yeah. it's the under 16s, and only three can get a scholar, then the then the one out of the three gets it, <laughs> one of the worst players in the team, and then two sick players don't get yeah. it, and they have no team, yeah. and then the career ends up going up and down. Yeah. It's a bit. So would you do it as if if you were a coach or you had someone influencing the team and you had a nephew, would you well, you know me already? I'm a I'm a stand up I'm picking the what it has to be <laughs> well, like what's best for the club. Yeah. Like the ability, but yeah. I would say they don't they don't make it bait, innit? Like Yeah, but it's on the cover, <laughs> innit? But like yeah, it's there, like that happens, it does happen. Like. But I found out recently as well that Conan Gallagher Yeah apparently has some family connection to Chelsea. I think to myself, like, not to get, like, I'm not, we're not here to, tra- to like, trash players, isn't it? But I look at him sometimes, I'm thinking, nah, man. To the Mac, brother. How did Gallagher crash at Kelsey Academy? I've seen him play sometimes. No, nah, but... But allegedly, man. No, nah, but, I, no, I, I, I feel like you're stretching it. No, nah, we've seen him sometimes. Bro, bro you're, you're stretching it. Gallagher's good, man. You can't question a player who's Chelsea Academy, he's playing pro first team football. And he's good, bro. bro. And for England. He's an England international now, bro. It's wonderful you see him, like. You see bro, him bro Gallagher's good. Fundamentally. Did you not see what he did for Palace? The season know, before, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. come on, Richie. Bro, 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 Richie does this one. He, he does. does he, he has certain players, yeah. When he's onto yeah, a player, yeah, yeah, he them. drags them down, <laughs> bro. <laughs> he drags them all the way. No one can change his mind. All right. Obviously, moving on, Josh. Yeah. What would you? It, this is more in terms of football, innit? Because bare people want to know how it is mm. and how to get in and stuff like that. Especially like you got bare youngsters that want to make it, etc. First of all, how important is ability in making it as a pro footballer? No, I see, no, listen, I I don't want to lie to people, when they're like, of yeah. course, hard work beats talent. You know, you heard that saying, hard work beats talent, and talent doesn't work hard, but the talent is your ability, do you understand? So you need to have some sort of ability, whether, as I said before, whether it's your touch, if yeah. you can play with two touch, whether it's ability to get past players or defending ability you need to have some sort of yeah fundamental if i can say that and then you build from there with the hard work if that makes sense so no nah, abilities i'm not saying no nah, you need me to have no ability at all but you need to have some sort of ability some sort of understanding of the game um in terms of like your technique or okay anything to just kind of get you going if that makes sense but what age is that from though would you say what ability was that you need to have that about you like some sort of understanding etc because obviously some people come in at like nine and that <laughs> yeah no no i would say from uh, 14 15 okay like, i think 14 15 you need to kind of have some type of understanding of the game and, and um, yeah you just kind of take it from there with your ability and 
and you start working hard and get you going forward to be honest okay because right, yeah. even uni uh, we learned about um what the thing the term but he said that and even when said it, he said if you don't have certain technical fundamentals yeah. at the age of 14 you can't have nothing at 14 and then learn and become great or become like even like, good enough you have yeah to, certain foundation by 14 okay and um this one's a peak one so this is about managers influence in it mm-hmm. how much does the manager specific instructions for a player influence how they play do i ask as well Cause Go on. Cause i've heard things people say how can you rate a player <clears throat> out of 10 if you don't know what the manager Same. asked him to do yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, it's true, it's true. Like, I think it's a good, very, very good question because, you know, most players that play, like, well, most players that play have a manager and a coach kind of thing. And um, the manager's input is so, 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 so important, bro. It's so important. Like, you hear it all the time, like, when, you're, when your manager puts his arm around you or gives you that leeway to play, you, s- you usually see that player doing much better. Than of course. Um, than someone that is kind of struggling, if that makes sense, um, but has their ability. And I will say that they have an impact on how you play. Uh, what they tell you to do, you try to please them. You try to play for them. Um, we will go into it later, but you got like... Players that, for example, that um, will push themselves for a certain type of manager and okay. not for a certain type of manager. Of course. And um, that's <coughs> simply because of how the manager's treating them, how the manager's shown them respect, so values them. And so you kind of get that drive to be like, oh, I'm going to give 110. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's why I, I do believe that even me, I've struggled with my own career with having certain type of managers kind of leave me to a side... And you're thinking, oh, what do I need to do to get in the team? What do I, like, do I go have a chat with him? Do I, oh, he said something. There's a battle because there's, like, no guidance kind of thing. there's no guidance. When there's no guidance, it's very, very difficult. Very difficult. So, yeah. Um, Speaking of that, yeah, what, who was the manager, you could say, person that had the most influence on you in terms of, like, psychology getting the best out of your game? Um, Yeah, man's going positive first. Yeah. That's a good story. Tough question. I think one guy from United, Colin, the best coach I've had, striker coach, and uh, nice. he's known for like training, like Marcus and kind of the forwards. Okay. Mason at the time, he was there, and myself. Um, he was he was so influential on me because it's like the little details for me that counts. You be like, oh, shift your feet, take more steps before you take a strike, and then. You kind of see it happen straight away. Okay. And you're, you're, you kind of reflect. I'm someone that will do something, hear something, and then do exactly what you've told me to do. Adjust like, briefly and then be like, okay, yeah, that works or this doesn't work. So I think he was probably the most influential in the side of like, my game aspect, uh, correcting me instantly and then... I think psychologically he's probably been like my mum or dad like mm. kind of just supporting me throughout whatever situation I go through. I would say, yeah, them two people um, <coughs> have helped me massively. Or three people, should I say, yeah. Okay, I think um, we've gone forward a bit. So that reminds you, yeah. So can you give us a little bit of uh, light... S- D- tell us a little bit more about like how it got for you to even get to Uni- United. Okay. Like what happened or what was the story for you to get to United or and briefly about how you like got into football, how you developed yeah, no, and etc. Um, so I started about six, six, seven. <coughs> My dad took me to Brixton Rec. Afui, Afui, Afui's got a bare pro football, isn't it? Yeah, no, Afui's no joke. Um, Stedman, isn't it? Even Stedman's been influential. Let me not even lie. Shout out to Stedman. If you're watching this, Afui and um, Stedman, Tony, they've been influential in my career as well because they kind of built the fundamentals, as I was saying, Mm -hmm. the the technique. 
You see, Stedman's quite harsh, isn't it? Like, you get on to you, you don't matter what age you are. Like, you know. Same guy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 he, 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 he will drill. Like, he'll make, he'll make you not want to come back. Uh, <laughs> I've cried because maybe crying. Yeah, no, yeah. literally. He'll yeah. make you not want to come back. Like, <laughs> so don't come and play. Boy, what are you doing? Hey, boy. <laughs> Do it again. No, nah, he's not improved. He's not improved. Yeah. I can't play because I'm not improved. No, Stedman, he was... He was hard, but if you can listen to what he's saying and kind of just keep going, it builds that res- resilience. Yeah. And so, yeah, he helped me massively. And then, we see, I started there and then uh, actually moved to, like, um, Dulwich Hamlet. Yeah. Like what another... Oh, you got a yeah, yeah no, nah, I was at Dulwich... <laughs> yeah, I was I at... you were straight Redford. No, nah, no, nah, I was at Dulwich Hamlet for about a season or so uh, with... Um, a guy called Shane and Lamar. Oh, you're there as well? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Snap. So then they kind of got me to Brentford. Yeah. I, mean, so I went on a trial, something like that, and then done it exceptionally well. Um, I kind of stood out like with my ability, with my technique, and then from Brentford, I think it was like 12 to about 17. Yeah. Yeah, that's when I really um, built up, um, as I said, kind of that age yeah where you kind of learn your yeah. fundamentals you <coughs> learn your techniques you learn to play with both feet and stuff like that and so yeah i think brentford at 17 then i got like a, a england call up i went to the euros and then that's when I had, no. um, <laughs> yeah that's when, <laughs> that's when i had like the the big teams i had like majority of the teams um Majority of English teams that wanted me at the time, and uh, oh yeah, sorry to stop you there, yeah. Just quickly, yeah, before we go back to that, how does it work when a team wants you? Um, from what age? Academy or like, let's say from that period where you went Euros, right? Yeah. yeah like, yeah. who did they contact? How do you know about it, and how does it process from there? So basically, I knew that United was interested in me from about fifteen. Yeah. Because I had like. Um, a representative at the time it was like Josh make sure you play well a couple scouts here uh, they're watching you I was like oh what scouts he was at United West Ham Rah. Arsenal Tottenham so then I was just like oh, cool and then there was like a little box in it yeah in the academy um, that they had to stand in at okay the time. so they I don't know at Brentford there was a little square box that they okay. had to stand in. You could see them. So you kind of know, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of <laughs> had the, you kind of had an idea, ready what's going on, and then you know, especially on that side because obviously I would, used to play on the left wing and they used to be on that side. I used to make sure <laughs> perfect, that, <laughs> make sure that you do the work they see in me it properly. In. <laughs> Uh, if I'm doing my skills, I make sure I give them a little peek and then and just keep it moving. But um, yeah, no, I think what happens at the time. Um, they contact the club. Yeah. Say, oh, we're interested in this player. The club will give. Um, from about 17, it depends how long you've been at an academy for. Okay. Because there's compensation, yeah. isn't it? So from about 12 to 17, that would have been about, if I'm not mistaken, it's about, I think it's like 50, 60K a year. Okay. I think, um, or it might, be, it might be a bit more now. So it's about 50, 60K a year. But the club at the end, Brentford, yeah, that like Brentford has the kind of <coughs> say of how much they want, and so I think they went back to United and said like five hundred k or something r- along those lines, isn't it? And um, so big yeah, thing still, yeah, so it's kind of <laughs> mad still. So then United is like, oh, we'll give it some time, and then um, Brentford closed down, isn't it? The yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why. I think the chairman wanted it closed down. He wanted to focus on the first team and, and make a B team. And so that opportunity kind of took place. And then I moved to United. How m- which teams went for you, came for you? And which teams did you have to decide between? Um, you need to know this one. No, so I, like, I, had, I had a lot of teams, like generally a lot. I had like Arsenal, Tottenham. So who did you narrow down to then? So I narrowed it down to... United, Southampton, and Norwich. Why? Southampton. I went. That's I went to all three there. places. Okay, I think yeah. Norwich was very good, but it was just so far. Mm. It was f- like it. I felt like I. W- I didn't know where I was gonna go shopping. Like, 
When I say shop, <laughs> when I mean shopping, I mean like to get even normal food. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I went to the training ground and I was like, damn, like. I remember I'm 17, I'm not driving, so yeah. I'm thinking, how am I going to get to the shops? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And that kind of <clears> blew me off. Southampton was very, very good. Um, as well, like the training facilities, amazing, but it's just something, something about United that kind of, yeah, just <laughs> went to United. <laughs> and I just think, of, nah, I can't turn this one down. So, I get what you mean. I know, see, the the what United was offering compared to Norwich and Southampton is kind of like a no brainer, like, yeah. But can I ask, why did you narrow it down to those three out of everyone else, though? Um, I think. Those three was the most serious. Yeah, the most okay. serious. Like in terms of contract, they all three of them had like a sign on fee. Okay, that like the rest of them was like yeah, they tried to just to get to get me because of the situation that happened. Oh, so they tried to get you on yeah, a free. So d- kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't really show that they proper wanted. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, so it was kind yeah. of like oh, oh. yeah, he's. I look at Brentford, right? Everyone's yeah. going, okay, who's the best one? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. kind of like that, so. Like, they knew about me, but it wasn't, they also had their kind of golden boys. Yeah, 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 team, yeah. So, yeah. So, when you joined United, um, like, obviously, we saw clips and that. You hit it, run, you had ground running proper there, innit? Yeah. You look like you were, it, like, proper it, belonging. It took me a little while to be okay. fair. It took me about six months okay. to kind of get into it, which was kind of... Um, it's kind of weird for me at the time because you, you just come back from Euros, you just signed for let's say the biggest team in England, yeah, and then you kind of <coughs> think, ah, oh, yeah, I'm the man, like <laughs> going there, and then like I had like a little situation that happened, um, and I kind of just knocked my focus off. And okay, like, I wasn't really that personal stuff in that, yeah, yeah, personal yeah. stuff happened, and I could just kind of. Had to take my time and rebuild, and it took me about six months. Also, they never had like a proper under 18s coach at the time. Okay. So that kind of was like a bit. They said it was going to bring someone in, they didn't. But it was kind of a bit weird until Kieran McKenna came in. He's at Ipswich now, and um, as I said, Colin at the time he was there. So I think it took me about six months to kind of get going. Once six months hit, <coughs> I was. I was gone. Like, yeah, I saw it. There was one that was a Champions League match, in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's probably, my, I won't say my favorite match, but it was probably my best goals I've ever scored for for United. Mm. Yeah, we're dropping the highlights uh, of the goal scene. Hundred percent. What, what, what yeah, team was it against? Uh, Benfica, isn't it? I think yeah. Benfica won um, away from home. Uh, you name it, like the top players are playing. Jao Felix, like everyone. Was, yeah. Yeah, no, he was playing that game, so... How was he like, back then? He ripped it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he, he ripped bro, it, bro. the guy, Atletico spent 123 bro. mil on the guy. That's a he, big thing, because yeah. nah. Atletico ain't got money. So. I ain't seen, bro, I ain't seen someone <coughs> rip it like that, like Academy, like he, he, like, you know that, that flair, like, you know what yeah, though. Yeah. Like, <laughs> bro, this guy has it, like, he ripped it, but I don't know, man. <laughs> I just I think once once it hit 75 minutes something just took over me I just started, <laughs> I just started doing the math Cl- thing. I find Cl- like, Clutch G still Yeah no literally still <laughs> I just yeah The rest <clears throat> is history man like, Them two goals just it Cemented my I would say my time there Like kind of What I was doing it Kind of all came out in that game. Yeah. The hard work, the training and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, everyone will probably be thinking as they're watching this, they're, si- they're thinking in their head, they imagine, okay, it's all going uphill, in it? Yeah. So, yeah. they're probably thinking, why are you not there? Like, yeah, no. like w- what's what's the, n- the the next part of the story? Like, what's yeah. happening now? No, what's happened? So, <coughs> obviously, you know, in football, there's, there's decisions to be made, isn't it? So... It was actually after that game I got a new offer from United, and I, and so my okay. family moved up with me. I got them a house, or well, we got a house there in uh, in Manchester at the time, and and so um, United offered me a new contract. Everything was going well. Like I 
was uh, I think maybe like a season after I went into pre-season tour with the first team. Yep. Big and, Kings. Uh, you'd think that, yeah, you just kind of progress. Who was the coach at that time, Barry? It was Mourinho at the time, okay. mm. so Big Moon. <laughs> yeah, Mourinho was there. And, uh, Special I think one. some of us got the opportunity to go with the first team because it was... Um, it was the World Cup around that time. Oh, yeah, 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 so yeah. A yeah, lot yeah. of the players were resting, in, in that. resting or whatever. So, yeah, so I went on tour and, and so on and so forth. And you think, yeah, come on, sign the contract. And um, it just kind of, I don't know, I was, I kind of started comparing myself to other players. If okay. I can put it that way. In United. In United, yes. Yeah, so was that affecting, affecting you negatively or positively? Um, well, I would say, well. yeah, the youth players negatively. Oh, okay. Because, like <coughs> yeah, like Gomez, Taif, um, Mace, you kind of start looking at them and thinking, oh, these lot, they, they look like they're on a bit more than me. Like, what's going on? Kind of thing. Yeah. Even though I didn't know, like, you hear rumours and, you speak to your like your your close brethren or your your, co- your close boys and say like, "Wow, what's going on? What are you saying? You're good?" And it just always seemed like they were on more than me. That's, uh, that's okay. why I think I made that kind of mistake. And then I had my uncle at the time, and now I know it's not always good to do business with family members. I, yeah, I think that's something that I've had to learn the hard way. And like, my uncle's like, "No, nah, no, nah, Josh, don't sign like." Don't worry, like I'm gonna get something for you bigger, like first team and so on and so forth. So I kinda believe them. Okay. And I think at that at that age I was what, nineteen? I think nineteen at that age you kinda think you kind of wanna play first team football and you kind of wanna be like I'm not gonna say the main man, but you kind of wanna Yeah, establish yourself. That's yeah. the best way to put it. I wanted to kinda establish myself and so I knew that for me, ideally, to get into United <coughs> was going to be very, very, very difficult under Mourinho. Um, not that Mourinho is a bad manager, but he just didn't look to the youth as much as some of the others that came in afterwards. Yeah, this has reality. been a debate with us anyway. Not a debate, because you kind of know, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's the reality. It's the reality. Mourinho's top manager, but he he didn't trust yeah. I'm gonna say he didn't trust because that's the that's the truth. Right, he didn't yeah. trust the youth as much as some of the other managers would have trusted youth, and he had his philosophy. Um, Andrew says win now philosophy. So I have a question for you. Just like yeah, to, I call it the win now philosophy. Like, yeah, no, that's it. You see, yeah, you see, like how Rashford, how he came out um, under Van Gaal. Yeah. Do you think he would have came out in the same no way, way it was under Mourinho? I don't think so. No way. It, name me one player apart from Scott McTominay, and if you look at at Mourinho's track record, track record yeah, Is like he, he he's on he win brings, now. Yeah. He brings in players that are very very physical. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. he Scott loved the first that. A lot yeah, of the physical. players that he brings in is <coughs> physical players. He brought in Slan. He brought in Rom. Hog was physical. Like they're a lot. They're established in their bodies. They're established um, with like how many games they played. And if they're not, it's like even at Tottenham, he's brought in uh, Jaffet. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see like they're established. Similar profile, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're his profile of the players that he brings in are established, kind of mm. in not in terms of playing games, but in terms of like their body wise. Yeah, 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 physically they, established. They, they yeah. look like a man, even if they're not a man. <coughs> yeah, say that. yeah. So, yeah. No, it's yeah. You can talk about even like how Rashford was under Mourinho. Yeah. Like I remember, like he was a bit starting. I remember even like um, for a time, not playing him, and middle asking like, why not playing Rashford. <laughs> And what you do, so some, some games you play Rashford, and Rashford and Mayor, obviously, you're not... And you're then not you say, that's why I'm not that's, playing. That's why I'm not playing Rashford. <laughs> you see why I don't play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did, he did that Roma as well, a couple yeah, of times. Yeah. No, literally, literally, yeah. I think that um, you got, like, players, as I said earlier, you got players that if a manager puts his arm around your shoulder, yeah. it's a lot easier for you to yeah. perform. 100%. Mm. Mourinho is just... <laughs> As you said, he's the win. Like, yeah. Win now. <laughs> win now, that's it. And yeah. you do whatever it takes to win, if that makes sense. And uh, sometimes he's not really focusing on development. Yeah, He's focusing on getting three points regardless of how he gets the three points. Do you think like that's what separates guys like Klopp, Pep apart in terms of like having sustainable yeah, success, but also like for the future? 
Even Ashley, I remember when Ashley got at Chelsea, he brought through like Kakuta, Mkeku, and like. Of yeah, course, yeah. of course. I think that like you got your Peps, Klops, um, you got like even a Brighton manager who's Deserby. kind of. Deserby, yeah. You can see that they're not just. They want to win, but they want to win. They're people with managers too. Developing yeah. um, the players. Even Ten Hag right now. You mm. can see the way he's developing the team of United. And it's noble still. It's noble. It's, it's, it's yeah, you can see yeah, it clearly. Yeah. Like there's no there's no disregarding that that that's what that's what and that's how they have It is been, risky. Like. Look at Wenger. That's what you call risky. He had thing. So I want to ask so like, is it a case where you're looking at players that like Angel, like Mason, these players, and you're going raw. You're on their level of ability. So, well, go on. why them and not me? Yeah, no, of course. I think, as I said, you, you, it's very easy when you're in academy or when you're playing to compare yourself, and it's very, 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 very difficult to not compare yourself. Yeah, yeah. Course, yeah. Because oh, why is he training first team? Oh, I scored the other day, or. You don't really know. There's not enough communication to why this player is training first team or this player is in the first team and you're not. If that kind of makes or sense. Transparency. Okay. Yeah, mm. there's not enough. I think um, in terms of like, in terms of the game, like you have your managers. They tell you what to do, but they don't tell you. Oh, this is what the manager is looking for. Mm. Yeah. If you can do <coughs> this more, you're gonna get more of a chance. Yeah. Yeah. And so you're kind of just kind of working every day and not really knowing what to do and yeah that that's and peak. that's what's difficult that's interesting it. then are there players who are there now or players who maybe moved on who, who you know that even right now before that in terms of like just ability for ability you're on their level or better but yeah. somehow the careers have have changed things have gone up and down and things no, are exactly as i said this it's about the people that you have around you that's and that's peak, man. It's it's football's made of small decisions sometimes. Yeah, like marginal, to yeah. get to the top of the top, it's made of very very small decisions. Like mm. um, it's small decisions, but doing it correctly all the time. Yeah. So you got Ganacho's agent that I know very well, for example, and I speak to him not all the time, but here and there. And he he's got the relentless mindset. So I know, for example, Ganacho is not taking his foot off the gas. Yeah. So because he's not taking his foot off the gas, he's always, um, how can I say, he's always there in front of Ten Hag. Yeah. Like, it's the small deals like that that cause mm, okay. Ten Hag to say, you know what? Let me play you. Let me come on. I'll like, And on. then when he comes on, go on go. I don't know if you notice, you every single time causes he causes danger. On, yeah, he causes danger, but it's his energy. Yeah, yeah he got a lot energy. of energy. So yeah, it's small stuff like that. You, catch your body on the you, you, <laughs> like, it starts in the training ground. Like, mm. I guarantee he's not lazy. I guarantee he's in the gym before any of the first team. Mm. Um, and I, when I mean he's in the gym, I mean like, I'm not saying doing gym. I'm saying you got like... Pr- um, Conditioning. Not conditioning, no. It's like before you go out to train. Yeah. I think it's uh, pre, pre-workout pre or something like that oh. where you're doing like squats, but body weight squats and okay. just uh, stretching and you're making sure that your muscles are loose. I guarantee you he's in there first. Like I don't even need to know. I just, I don't even need to speak to someone to yeah. know if he's, I know he's in there first because those are the small margins yeah. that keep you on the mindset of a manager. Mm. That keeps you ready, that keeps you alert, so that when the opportunity comes, you're there. So there's players that I would say have more ability um, than me, but there's also players that I've had more ability than them. And because you kind of compare yourself, you kind of you chill, like you don't really have that readiness 24-7 to yeah. get you to where you need to get to, if that mm. makes sense to you. Like he, for example, when I went on pre-season tour, like I was kind of just kind of blown back, but I should kind of had that mindset. This is where I belong. Yeah. And if I had that mindset, this is where I belong. I would have done things differently in terms of training or in terms of, you know, putting myself a bit more out there. And I think those are the small margins that you don't really hear much of. If I'm being honest with you. So yeah. Okay. You know, like that reminds you of like something I've been seeing in Chelsea recently in terms of like 
in terms of comparing yourself, for example, Christensen, um, one of the reasons he didn't extend was the fact that he felt like because he was a Chelsea Academy player, they would all see him as Academy and therefore not value him mm. as equally to the other players who were like his peers in the club. So that's like, oh, you're Academy player. happens still fair players. Yeah, and even Mason as well. Like, that's what, like said that like, 10 years ago. Yeah. Everyone said he's really... Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So sometimes when, from the outside point of view, fans are probably thinking, well, why are you not signing that? Like, you're yeah. a bit of a snake, but you're not understanding his, their point of view in terms of yeah. they equate even people always say, oh yeah, 100k is a lot of money, but if you, I know a guy is next to me, that it's the principle yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where your principle. value, that's almost how you define, measure your value. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, if you're, if you're lowballing me, it's like, do you value me like that? Or do you value me as much as a peer? Money like, salad thing. Yeah. <laughs> was Ravel Morrison there when you was there? Yeah. Ravel Mer- Morrison. No, no, he wasn't there. He wasn't there. I wanted to ask you about him. <laughs> <laughs> I heard stories about him, but he wasn't there still. Yeah. Heard, oh, heard yeah. Really sick. Okay, um, so you're at the stage where um, you're at the stage where like United things are supposedly not going as well in it, and, you're comparing uh, and then you, yeah, you so you're not myself. so you're comparing you're not signing contract. I'm not here. signing because I'm comparing myself. So I'm kind of saying like I want this much. I want that. if you had to go back, would you sign it? Yeah, I would have signed it probably. Yeah, probably I would have signed it. Not probably I would have signed it. I think, I think that's gonna because if I signed, I would. I think. 20 last year my contract would have been up or this year my contract would have been up so that would have been maybe six seven years at united and yeah. six seven years at united then you can walk into any team you want 100 percent. like i've I, I see players for example um leave city and go to you know top teams as lead or whatever it be and and yeah. and that's that's the the power of of playing for like a yeah, top top team yeah. Yeah. Even Labia, who's the other guy that plays for City, the winger? Got his name. Le, there's, um, Odo, Odo, is it Odozi? Odo, Odo, yeah, Odo, yeah, it yeah, does, yeah, him. Football, yeah. 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 I knew in football, yeah, if you make the right choice, you can end up, and even the wrong choice, you can end up somewhere else. I, no, I, exactly. I've clocked it. Like, yeah. It's margins, do you know what I mean? And it's, you need to have the right people around you. You have to have the right people. I've clocked. I didn't have the right person around me at the time, you know, like moving from Brentford to United, I had the right people around me. That helped me, and then moving from United, I didn't have the right people around me, and I had my mum and dad. But the industry is much more higher than my mum and dad for them to understand yeah. what's actually going on. Yeah. The industry is is very, very like it doesn't owe you anything. Yeah. So it's kind of like yeah. you know what uh, in a bit sell you out like yeah. kind of go. Is that why some players have like their brothers as their agents? Yeah, no, that's that's the reason why. Actually, isn't it? have their you look at interest. You look at Marcus. Like Marcus has his brothers, isn't it? Like yeah. even Odoi. That's kind of deal with yeah. Brother, yeah. Yeah. It's simply because I believe that Marcus's uh, his brothers and Odoi's brothers can go in there and demand and kind of say what you want yeah. without you saying it. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you know, yeah. So kind kind of like, oh, he wants this. Oh, but does he really want this? He doesn't want that. No, he does. I'm his brother. I know him. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. you get what I mean, and and so they kind of don't. It doesn't fall back down on the player because then you're just concentrating on your football. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. So like a lot of the agents, they they think obviously when you have your brother, or someone that you really trust is the clubs. They can't kind of um, how can I put it? They can't. Uh, go behind your back yeah, with the agent go behind, they can't think oh is this the agent that wants yeah. this yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 makes yeah, sense saying, so yeah. yeah I think that's that's important but you gotta have the right person yeah because sometimes uh, agents or me was my uncle he he didn't have my best interest and so he kind of kind of sold me out and yeah that's how it is sometimes so when um so when you after you didn't sign the contract, so your uncle said he'll deal with stuff in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So is it the agent's job to go out and look for the clubs? Yeah, no, most definitely it's the agent. So what when he went out to look, which clubs came or what? So how how what happened there? What basically? happened was I didn't see after the Benfica game, I got offered a contract, which was I still had one year left on my contract. Yeah, and so. I t- kind of told um, my uncle, I said, look, I'm going to give you a year to kind of sort out whatever you need to sort out. Um, and so he's kind of just sold me a couple of dreams. But you got to understand he's my uncle. I'm 19. I'm 
I'm still not. Of course. I'm not mm. developed yeah, in my yeah, yeah. mind to, to kind of do things on my own. You kind of still rely on your family to kind of get you to that next barrier. Yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. And so he's kind of just said, don't worry, don't worry, don't okay, worry. He cool. never really gave me details of who he was talking to. Um, I know he was talking to a few French teams, but in the end, there was no... Um, contract on the table kind okay of thing. so it was kind of like yeah we like him he's a top player but where's the contract kind of thing yeah um is there a contract for him to move into the first team but he you know he kind of just kind of kept on saying oh be patient be patient don't worry these things take time but i gave him a whole year mm. so i kind of kind of me and my family just got tired and said you know what we'll do on our own and then that's when uh I didn't get in contact, but someone else close to me got in contact with Nat Breda, which was, I felt at the time, was the best thing for me. Okay. Um, to get playing regularly, fo- regularly first team football. Um, people probably say, ah, oh, but why didn't you just sign for United after that? Because um, I waited so long, and United waited so long that they kind of said to me, ah, right, Josh, you're a top player, um, but we're going to let you do what you want to do. Okay. And that's when there was a certain date that they had to sign by. Yeah, or like deadline not, thing. They have to yeah. release you kind of thing. And um, so I didn't sign and, and that's when they, they put it out that I'm a release player. But I did have an offer. I did have a contract. It's just that I didn't sign it yeah. before a certain time. So, yeah. And when, just like obviously... No, go on, go on. When was it that... Th- did Ali come to club sh- shortly after? Um, so he came, I think he came maybe like, f- I didn't st- I didn't spend long with Ali. He came about maybe like five, four months mm. into my final year. Mm. And obviously I was training with the first team and um, yeah, like he, it was above him kind of thing because I don't know if you remember when he came, he was... Caretaker. Yeah, he yeah. was a caretaker. So he wasn't the actual manager. Mm. He was kind of just bringing the spirit of United back, oh, kind together, of yeah. bringing after the happiness Mourinho. and the joy. Because, yeah, after Mourinho left or when Mourinho was there, it was difficult for the majority of us players. Yeah. So, yeah. How was it described that spirit like, in terms of like? Um, as I said, Mourinho's, he's a top manager, but he has that kind of mentality where if you win, you can be around him, you know what I mean? And if you lose, lose. it's kind of, yeah, it's difficult for him. I remember a time, I don't know if you guys remember the game when he played against Juve, uh, Champions League, and they they won at the end, 2-1 against uh, Juve, and then he was going around to the Juve, kind of doing his air like that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if you guys remember, isn't it? Because there was... They was getting on to him the whole game and then... Oh, got Inter Milan, yeah. No, not Inter. Juve, Juve against United, innit? Oh, well, so I thought it was on him because he's, he's before Inter. Inter, Inter, Inter oh, Inter, yeah, no, nah, probably yeah. that's the reason why. Yeah, probably, yeah. So, and then, yeah, the next day after we after we won, we had, like, recovery, innit? Well, the first team had recovery and I was with them and he was, like, putting his arm around me. I was thinking, bro, like, in my head, I was thinking... Yeah, it's like got him, like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you don't even know what to do, but you're just thinking, yeah, like, I need this, yeah, 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 yeah come on, come on, like, yeah. He's like, you're right, you're, you're good, and I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, like, I need more of this. Mm. And then I think they lost on the weekend. Like <laughs> walked past me like I wasn't there. I was thinking, <laughs> saying that. literally walked past Crazy. me on his phone, just, so you're thinking, you can see that when they won, it was it was yeah. easy for everyone to get along, and <laughs> when they lost, it was like <laughs> take a deep breath and uh, it's crazy, man. keep going, man. But yeah, that's how he is, man. He's very, very like he has to win by all means. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's his his mentality. <laughs> Look at yeah. Roma, man. I feel like Roma should have won. If I'm being honest, hundred percent. I know what you're gonna say. Yeah. You know, after they scored the first goal, right? Yeah. yeah. They they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Because yeah. well, yeah. yeah. they invited Sevilla to do, Russia, yeah. and Sevilla's better than them. Yeah. One yeah, v, like far better than them. So if you allow Sevilla to do that, it's only going to end that's one his, way. That's his game plan. If you look at 
how many yeah it is but well, you know it's yeah just before i move on to the point i want to say yeah i actually think that kind of game plan in terms of the highest level football in terms of like this parking the bus do you think it's as effective now in today's climate in the, like football uh, it depends innit it, it, in the EPL I would say no yeah, yeah. Okay, like but in the World Cup it worked really a cups, lot cups. I think Cup's yeah. probably better for it I think competitions where you competitions like Champions League yeah, yeah. but like oh. league it's not yeah, gonna yeah, work, gonna work and Conte it. found out the hard way <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um, do you think in terms of that mentality of like because sometimes a lot of players are like that that's, that's almost like a player mentality in terms of like Jordan had it in terms of like you're so engulfed in the winning, it's like the winning or losing will define how you are and how you kind of like your everyday life. So do you think okay. it's hard for a manager in terms of like you're d- not only it's not only you, you're dealing with people under you, and you have to look after people under you. Is it unhealthy to have that kind of attitude? Because obviously that does more you to win, but if it's like if I don't win, no one could be around me, and it's like affecting team spirit, it's affecting dressing room. It can. I stuff. think it can of course. affect the team spirit. Yeah. It can affect the team or people around you. I know players that. After they lose, it's, they need to kind of have like a, a switch off button. Yeah. Kind of when they enter their houses, all right, okay, yeah. the game's behind me now. But yeah. on the bus, or <coughs> even me, like sometimes on a bus, you don't really want to talk to anyone. Or yeah, it's difficult after a, a big loss or knockout. It's it's hard, isn't it? So I think the players and the coaches, it's just the desire to win so much is within them that it kind of just shows and Mourinho is probably the biggest person that like he wants to win so much that mm. when he doesn't it just hurts him so much mm. if that makes sense yeah we saw he was <laughs> blasting the referee yeah, after no, that yeah, <laughs> you could tell that like, he he in was him. angry yeah, inside yeah. for losing that and he that's his way of kind of letting it out before mm. he gets to his family for example yeah, yeah. I, I know I don't know, but I don't assume that when he's around his family, he's like that. I, yeah. don't, I don't assume that, but I think for him to let it all out before he gets to his family, and because it's easy for you to then just take it out on your family. Oh, go! Ah. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's easy yeah, for you yeah. to do that, and so it's difficult when you lose or when you, you have that type tough. of that result that hurts you so much, mm. affect, affects you, and can affect people around you, but. Mm you got to find a way to kind of deal with it. And again, I think people are getting better at it, but it's still very, very difficult. Do you think the industry have a, um, the protocols in place in terms of like helping players mm. like psychologically, emotionally? Like? I, yeah, think, I, they, I think they're getting yeah. better at it, yeah. but I don't think there's enough. Like there should be like a psychological mentor or something at each club. Man, mm. Because... Well, right now there isn't. Oh, there isn't. I don't think there is. Oh, like, surprising. I remember United, there was... I think there was one, but you don't really take advantage of him because he's kind of just there. Like, yeah. Okay, I get what yeah. you mean. He needs to be a part so of the yeah, 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 yeah. Like coaching stuff, yeah, like, like there in like your coaching. face. Yeah, yeah. He needs to oh. say something. He yeah. needs yeah. to, you know, all right, boys, come in. And he also needs his, to give his point of view yeah. because when they're just there and they're like, oh, I'm here to talk to you if you need. Yeah, you're gonna be you're like, never yeah. going to go so, and talk do to you. Yeah. The reason why I'm surprised it's not there already yeah, is because... Uh, for example, I feel like it could be good for when clubs like lose their identity. Yeah. For example, I feel like Arsenal could have done with stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Especially a team like Arsenal where yeah. we went through years sleeping giant. Yeah. Like no one knew what their identity was. Mm. So I guess the coach indirectly has to be there as well then. Yes. Yeah, he's, he's got to be a part of it. Coach is also a psychologist. Yeah, he's got to be a part of that, I believe. And I don't think they are, they are a part of it. Yeah. They are in the team, but it's not like... I need to, oh, coach, I need to speak to this player. I can okay. see that he's lacking a bit of confidence. Yeah, you look at Sancho at the moment. Like, That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, lacking example. confidence. Like, Sometimes it's so clear because they're a shadow. Like, on the touchline, Sancho, come. Oh, you're, like, put a smile, not put a smile on your face, but like, go show a bit more energy and then like, this is going to come out. Try it again. Do it again. Do it again. Don't yeah, worry. yeah, yeah. Like, I've told, I told the manager, it's okay. And, and that's the problem. Like, when okay. you have the responsibility of, as a manager, I'm talking, as winning the game, it's very, you're very thinking, difficult yeah, for you to yeah. develop your players in that kind of mindset. But it's, you could do it in training. You could do it, like, yeah. have someone there, like, no, do it again, do it again. Nah, no, give him the ball, let him do it again. Yeah, um, sorry to cut you, but that that's that's what I was thinking, like, because sometimes it's easy to cuss a coach and that, innit? But, like, 
is hard in it to maintain with all the stress that yeah, you have from higher yeah, up yeah. to maintain composure yeah. when it's not going well and then still develop unless you're a team that's there's slightly less pressure yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. which is why like i commend brighton and that but it's less pressure it's than maybe same. a city or yeah. arsenal G- or United, yeah. Yeah. which you know, there's huge, huge pressure. No, I, really I commend them, but it's less pressure. Like them, they all have time to develop. Like with under less pressure conditions. Yeah. Like even Saka, when he started developing, Arsenal weren't doing so well. So yeah. you'll have a bit less pressure to develop than, let's say, I don't know, someone that comes to Chelsea mm. or a Mount or something like that. Do you yeah. get? It? No, that's that's true. That's 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 no, but I agree with him yeah. though. Yeah, but you know, is yeah. Do I, I really commend? <coughs> does his work clock? Might be because of Christian, man, but yeah, I don't know if that's the case. But Klopp, um, I remember you gave an interview about how Lewandowski used to have, uh, you know everyone's getting new now, they're missing. He's like, back in the day when Lewandowski was young, he used to have mm. mad, like, training, he's been missing all the time in it. But how he used to keep, like, more of it, like, keep going, keep going, keep going. Mm. And have little games and little bets of him trying to make it, oh yeah, how many points you can score out of six and stuff like that. But I don't know, like, I, I agree with you, I think it is hard sometimes to have your eye on a, ma- on a macro vision in terms of winning when there's a team, but also... How's it easy with your players doing? I think, as you said, like maybe yeah. a person dedicated to it, like yeah. their job to actually look yeah. after the well-being. Yeah, because yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like if yeah. you have that going through first team, 21s, 23s, 18, 16s, mm. you will see much more players develop faster mm. than having, you know, what's going on now because they don't have enough of it. So. Mm. I think Pep said it once, you know, like Phil Foden is probably one of the best. Like he misses a chance and it's cleared from his mind. But how many players have that? They don't have that. Yeah, it's because it's hard to have that. It's hard, yeah. to, it's hard to, but they could develop that. That's yeah, yeah, develop. yeah, yeah, yeah. When I've been training lately, my coach, Kez, he says one thing to me. He says, no frustration. Mm. And that means you, t- you take a strike, you miss, no frustration. How many people in the Prem, or you watch, they take a strike, they miss, they know they're supposed to score, they put their hands on their head. Oh, man. Yeah. And well, it man. stays in your head. I don't care what you say, it stays in your head <laughs> for at least a couple of minutes. Yeah, 100%. Like the best players, it, you can, you, you learn how to kind of get rid of it quickly, mm. but it stays in your head. And now imagine a young player doing that, mm. coming into the first team and, Missing a crucial shot. He, he shots. wouldn't even want to ask for the ball again. Yeah, he don't even <laughs> want you to pass him again. That's, that's <laughs> even happened to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah I yeah. can say that. I can vouch for that. Like, you do something, doesn't work, or you do something in the first team, it doesn't work the way you, you expect it to work, and you're thinking, oh, I don't, like, you don't kind of want to mess up. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. And if you had that, someone there, like, oh, unlucky, just try it again. Like, put a bit more curl on it this time. And you have someone there at that very moment. And not only once, but constantly, constantly as in it's their there. job full time yeah, to constantly do that. Yeah. For you to kind of try it again or try it like this. or, And then you kind of, as you said, you don't have that pressure on you, if that makes sense. You kind of, you don't feel overwhelmed by the situation and then you kind of try it again. Mm. Yeah. That's how you improve. Do you think there's, there's potentially a gap in the market for, like, for people who are outside football? No, outside teams to like and consult the basis to go into clubs and work with them and work with players. I think if if it don't exist right now in clubs, then mm. definitely opportunity for people. I think it's yeah. there, like you just have to look for it, you yeah. kind of thing. It's, it's, I think it is there. As I said, when I was at United I remember someone being there that there was even like a pastor kind of thing, but yeah. he's not Yeah, he wasn't <laughs> Yeah, he wasn't <laughs> utilized. Yeah, like, he wasn't <laughs> utilized. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't utilized. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> let's, not, let's not even. Let's not even the same. Let's like, let's not even come round at lunch. Wait, have some lunch they, with you and wait, keep they it had a designated pastor. Yeah, they had right. like a. Yeah, 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 you're gonna yeah, shut this guy off, bro. They had like a like a pastor at the time. Come round. How you and you don't wanna be disrespectful, but you know he's gonna talk. <laughs> he's got to talk and he's got to talk he's got to talk but it's like it shocks me sure. yeah he wasn't he was just there kind of thing so yeah. like you didn't really take advantage of what he can give just come around at lunch and, and that's about it you just see him around but wait wait wait, wait. I was just trying to understand this wait so he what like he was on payroll by United <laughs> as in you need a spiritual <laughs> something to <the> team <laughs> nah, <laughs> pastor I don't know exactly but I, I'm saying he was there innit like 
you see him like Monday, Thursdays or whatever. And I said you come round at lunch, yeah, ask you how you're doing. And um, he should have noted. Um, what's his name? Um, yeah. Um, Lukaku's touching it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lukaku's great. Into loving man. No, man. They love him in Italy, bro, and Belgium as well. Yeah. So I don't know after World Cup though. I have to give him captaincy. They though. gave him yeah. captaincy, bro, over Courtois. Yeah, he was burning as well. <laughs> yeah. he was burning. So, um, well, yeah, another thing I always wanted to know as well, yeah. I don't know how much you know about this, but what's the role of, like, media in football? Like, how many, how, just going to say it out there now, how, like, manipulated is it? How, how, <laughs> like, one thing I've clocked here, the reason why I'm asking is because even with the rice transfer stuff, I've clocked something. Yeah. The media will only know what the club wants them to know. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. So they yeah, only they only show you what you need to know. If that makes sense, you don't they they don't show you what is behind the scenes. Um, the media is, I don't believe in the media. <laughs> that that, that's why I said that because I've started to clock certain things. Like it's very easy for you to see something and and think, oh yeah, yeah. like oh yeah, this this is going on. Like and, uh, I don't want to talk too much about it, but yeah. Like the, Trust the, me, I the, don't. The situation that happened with Mason, for example, not everyone knows what's actually happened. So, yeah. like, the media said one thing, and now that's what's set happened. in stone, and that's it. Like, you don't really know what's happening unless you ask him. Do you, get what do, I mean? do you know why it's mad? Because if I, if one of us are players, yeah, and one time your name gets attached to rape, you know, like that's you, you in it. Yeah. No, but no, jumped. no, but that's you though. Everyone, though there's a there's up. a host yeah. of fans yeah. here that will always attach you to rape, yeah. and they'll yeah. and they'll say yeah, but he paid them off, but he did it though. Yeah. Yeah. I was say, that's what and I, then it's done. Yeah. That's part of but but do. I don't even want to ask this question here because mad. Like, mm-hmm. are they allowed to, like to to fabricate certain things though? I'm uh, want, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, like and be careful. I'm gonna say that's so what like, I'm saying. That, that there I is know. times. Like there's a player at United, I'm not gonna say no one's name, but he he used to do his own thing. Okay. Like when I mean his own thing, like get into serious trouble. Okay. Like serious like kind of like Ravel on it. Serious trouble. Okay. Top player, bro. Like one of the best players I've played with. But you would never hear about what happened to him. Why? Oh, I knew because that. People don't want you to hear about it. People at the club don't want you to hear about it. And so they'll make sure it doesn't come out. Just put it that way. Um, would, it be, would it be controversial to ask me? To ask you, like, what ethnicity this player is? Nah, nah, you'll be very mad. Nah. Yeah, just stop it. Stop it. I think it's Stop it. Stop it. I think it's the <laughs> fact that... I'm curious, isn't it? Yeah, no, the, it's the fact that he was the golden... Golden boy. Golden boy at the time. So oh, man. <laughs> yeah, or golden, golden man. So at the time, don't worry, it's man. We edit very, this out if you want. It's very, very <laughs> difficult. Out who <laughs> yeah, no, it's difficult for you to like to ask me that and, and say I'm gonna say to you, oh, yeah, he's this. But he was the man, basically. Must be guy about off camera, off camera. He was the guy, uh, there, not off camera either. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he, he was the guy there, and so he would, he would, he would get into serious trouble. Like when I mean, I'm talking like. Bands like stuff like that, mm. and so people don't really know like what's happened, then. But when you're inside the club, you know, innit? and uh, no fans would know, yeah, yeah, unless I don't know, unless a player comes out and says, Oh, this and this happened at yeah. this time, and yeah, that's the, and it's mad it's mad because the media has such a, such a great influence in terms of like sometimes you won't even notice that mm. they've literally def- defined your point of view as a player. For example, Ashley Cole was seen as like Ashley Cole. But obviously, Arsenal fans have that on the agenda. Right? No, yeah. some of us will know. But so already, <laughs> it's like, they see him as well like, now, oh yeah, a goody player. So it's like, <coughs> not even knowing who the person is. Apparently, Ashley Cole yeah. is a really nice guy. Mm. The, the people in general just judge him and think this Of course. Is like, the, the, the like average football fan, yeah. of course. Really book, young, yeah. so that's why unless I, you, I like, did. critically it's think about, yeah. like, 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 unless you critically literally yeah. sit down and have scrutinised everything, yeah. like uh, us man do. Yeah. I mean, it is, yeah. And the average casual person won't, won't do that because, for example, I remember I had a point of view about Mbappe, yeah. about yeah. how he mm. was. I remember, I remember like, other brought up in a group show, I was like, right, like, is it possible that the media potentially influenced how I see him? Oh, like how, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how no, it is. Arrogant, 
It is though. It is. I, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I told someone I worked. I'm this. telling you, man. By the way, by the way, you lot say that for Mbappe. You don't say it for CR7. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say it for CR7 as well. Like, there's an agenda behind CR7. Thank you. Like, no, thank you. you. When I said there was an agenda, you no can't, one listened. You can't deny no. that, bro. Thank you. They they deny it. Okay, they deny it. You can't deny it. I said the arc has been painted. CR7 is the. No, but okay, I get what you say. You say you're put. Fuel it to just sell it to sell yeah, no, to sell the black exactly. players. One is that I think it's more like the, it's the black players. If you're a black player, mm-hmm. yeah, and you do anything shaky, <laughs> they don't be on you. Yeah, it's it's true. True. feel yeah. black yeah. pain. You drink like Greelish. Why is it on finished? So that's exactly yeah. that's, that's a mad one. You look, at, you look at Jack Grealish. I guarantee, you, if that was Marcus Rashford, oh, if that was <laughs> Bakayo Saka, <laughs> like let's be real, man. Like unless you got the humble image, their like, names yeah. won't be. Oh, like oh, I'm Kante. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, name, the names will be tarnished rich. a bit. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. They'll still be able to have a great career, but the names will be tarnished. Mm. Yeah. And so when it's Jack, like, yeah, we love you, oh, Jack. Just let him enjoy it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mad, he but let him enjoy it. it. And he does deserve he it. I'll be honest, you know the Jack Gray thing? As a football fan, I'm saying, that's new, you know. I've never seen a player get away with that in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Even, I've never. <laughs> Usually, yeah, they're harsh, you scrutinize. Yeah. Like, it's why is this player drinking? He's not dedicated. It's yeah. Jack. He's Jack oh, the lad. Lad, lad <laughs> yeah. He's got a bit of banter. He's yeah. got the hair. Even yeah. players like Gascoigne <laughs> and that never used to get away with yeah, that. they didn't even get away with it. So, there is an agenda behind the media. That was Pogba? Oh, <laughs> So yeah, Pog- I don't like to, yeah. yeah. I don't like to. Pogba's one, yeah. Pogba got <laughs> bullied so much in the media that I started to think, Pogba, yeah. is this actually how you are? <laughs> yeah. Like, it was mad. And Pogba's, cool. Pogba's one of the nicest guys, bro. Like, you told nicest like, guys. Like, yeah. Where's cool injured? Guy. And then he's dancing. He's just dancing. Recovery. And they, they say he's because he's not serious. Well, it's sometimes it's a bit mad, though. Like, Why he dancing? Like, no, I think for the World Cup, no. In- you're in your, like, you're in your house. You're in your, like, not his house, but he's in, yeah. his, he's in his training ground. Yeah. Do you think that he's not applying himself the way he needs to apply yeah. himself to yeah. get fit? Yeah. Do you genuinely think he's having fun and dancing? And just <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't want to come back and play? Yeah. Come on, oh, yeah. you, like you're injured. You're gonna do everything possible to get yeah, fit. Pitch, yeah. He probably done an extra set, and then after that extra set, he started dancing, oh. and that's what they put. <laughs> Ah, uh, look, he's not serious. Uh, I can't be dancing with the bands around his feet. <laughs> uh, you're thinking, let him breathe, man. Like, black. No, yeah, like, that man there, yeah. I don't want to say it because it's controversial, but Sarnes has a certain undertone when he criticizes Pogba, for sure. Who? Sarnes, especially. I I I'm not involved. Especially yeah. him. I think uh, it's so obvious that it can't be that. Do you mean so? Yeah. You mean Sunes? No, but the way that he's like, ah, oh, Pogba. No, but do you know where he is, do though? Come, come on, give him the club. Do you know where he is, though? Yeah, people don't come so far, do, you? do you know where he is, though? No, Sunes, I don't think it's only Pogba. Sunes has his strong opinions yeah. on certain players. Yeah. yeah. Because, for example, he does the same with Rice. He does not race, r- rate Rice one bit. Oh, yeah, so. Um, like, says, at um, all. Is it? He doesn't play I think, I think a cute is a bit overrated. Though. Rice? Yeah. I, I like I, him. I have not debate with you guys in the group chat as well. Now, nah, these men say English chat. No, but everyone knows, yeah, in the current market conditions, he's worth 100 mil. But obviously, not everyone knows. In five years ago, do you think anyone, if you had told anyone you'll spend 100 mil on a DM, do you think anyone, people tell you you're nuts, bro. Yeah. But it's the current market condition. The yeah, current market condition it. says there's not much DMs yeah. that are as good as him. Yeah. yeah. So therefore... He's going to be that yeah. much. It, it's just I the way st- it is. I still don't think he's a hundred mil. Me and my boy always talk about him. Like, <laughs> I'm being so I'm imagine how many other footballers probably thinking I it. I think that Declan Rice is very, very good. He's a good player, but he's not. He's not a hundred mil, in my opinion. That's my opinion, isn't it? Yeah, that's I a lot of people's opinion. Like, very, very good, as I said. But what's he missing to be a hundred mil? Do you think as a DM? What's missing? Mm. For another thing It's very hard for us To agree that A DM's 100 mil You know It's insane I think that um, yeah. <laughs> People People are gonna If he goes to like To like your Arsenal And you think Like I've I seen an article I don't know if it's true I say I don't believe the media I've seen an article that mm. They They wanna get rid of Thomas Party isn't it? Apparently Arsenal, Yeah they wanna get rid of him And but they were party posted a, a picture today about Arsenal as well. Yeah. So they're like, oh, perhaps party wants to stay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, for example, like, say Declan Rice goes and then you got Thomas Party that um, leaves Arsenal. You're, you're going to think that Declan Rice, oh, he can do what Tom, Thomas Party does and better. 
But I don't think I he don't can. I don't think he can, man. I'm being dead. When I say I don't think he can, I think the the mindset of Thomas Party yeah, to defend his mindset is like is one of a kind because he's got that kind of ruthlessness. Like he wants to. Uh, by the way, are you with me that people are buying Thomas Party this season because yeah. of recency bias? Yeah, no. Nah, so you, know, you back him, so yeah, no, I, like, I like Thomas. I like Thomas Party. I think that okay, he's not he's not bad on the ball. Like you do need really to good. bring someone close to him to give him that support but I don't see Declan, Declan Rice going and doing um, uh, what Thomas Party can't do like you're going to see improvement but it's not going to be oh yeah that's it but we're clear now in the midfield no you're not I, that's my opinion I think Declan mm-hmm. Rice is a good player and you see it for Arsenal and as I said the media overhyped players like Declan Rice and Jack Grealish <laughs> That's the, that's the truth. No, no, no. no. They, they, La, 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 Jack Grealish is a top player as well. I, I've been impressed with him this season. Very impressed. But um, the hype for him is is high as well. Like he is, he is. How can I say? He is quality. quality. Yeah, like he's a top top player, and I've seen that this season in the way he's been coached by Pep, the way he plays, the way he brings other players into the game, but. At the beginning, I didn't quite see it, so I had my opinions. But he's 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 shown me the reason why he's his top top player. So yeah. Um, one question that we've been having a lot um in our group chats is Pat's legacy now is more trouble compared to Fergie. Yeah. Do you think he might be the best? Oh, see, I don't know about Fergie's time. I'm a bit young, innit? it. Let's just be real. But what Pep has done is tremendous, man. I'm not gonna lie, it's 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 gold, man, because. I think obviously the money helps. I think that the plays, the system that he has, is yeah. Needs, I'm glad needs, you mentioned needs, the money. He you needs have to be realistic. He needs a certain type of players. Yeah. Let's be real. Yeah. He needs a certain type of players. Me and my boy speak about it. He needs a certain type of players to perform his system. Yeah. Like you say to me, oh, oh, um, anyone can just come and score 30, 40 goals, but no. Not anyone can come and score 30, 40 goals. They will do well in uh, in a City team and they will get goals, but he has a certain type of players that can articulate the ball, pass it around, move in a certain type of way that allows him to produce um, the goals and the assist for someone like Erlen Haaland is the best way to put it. You can't have... Antonio. You, no, Antonio will score... A couple of goals. He was, goals. I think he will score twenty-five goals he in the seat. No, I think he will because it's not. He's not. Look at Boney. He, he's he's in. Close. He's in. Yeah, he's in the area. He's in. <laughs> he scored maybe like fifteen goals no, tapping. No, no, Boney's better than Antonio though. Yeah. Ten headers or something, for example, yeah. or maybe five penalties and then five headers or something. But you look at everywhere around the team. Mm. Yeah. Apart from the striker, you see quality. Everywhere in that team, starting from Edison all the way going forward, you don't think one player is shaking that team. I all agree. of them have ability to pass the ball of two or three touches. All yeah, but them. I feel like that's what Arsenal are trying to sort out They're right now. To do it now, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I feel like they still need to develop a bit more. But Arsenal will get there in a couple of years, I think. Not now. I think they had a, a freak season. Like season. over over achievement season, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Over, I think they had a <coughs> season like they done really well and they're doing well, but I think they still need to develop. Um, I feel like Arteta still needs. He, he's kind of going with the young players. I mean, I you mean like, he needs to like uh, the project is done basically? The pro- yeah, like yeah. The project. I think he's st- he needs to go now. Like he needs to. Go like it's get, time for stars. Yeah, like yeah. yeah, yeah get I get like, what you mean. Like, we all agree. Top, top yeah, they're getting better, ain't it? Imagine that'd be crazy. <laughs> yeah. Rafi, how much is he gonna demand per week? Perfect, I think I think Arsenal To be honest, Arsenal's at that stage where we're willing to change yeah, our to payment schedule, more. to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Rafael, league challenge. I think Ar- Ar- Arsenal as well, uh, Arteta is kind of he's he, I don't know, I've not seen him be able to deal with like top top players in terms of Oh like, management. Like, management, yeah. Okay. Like you got I mean, yeah, and you got players that um, he kind of struggled to, like I said, he kind of struggled to to deal with their kind of character, if 
I can put it that way. And he kind of, I see, what I see is that Arsenal, he wants players that he... Can mould. Yeah, mould. And it's the same with Pep. It's the right system to do it. Like, you look at Cancelo now. Cancelo's mm. going to be gone soon, I think. Because yeah, 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 100%. He doesn't want to adapt to Pep's system. And Arteta's doing the same thing, but he's got to go and get players that are established also. Yeah, 100%. Like, for example, like, Gabriel, Jesus... Zeus is not established, but you can see that he was like he got, the, the experience he's shows. More, you yeah. can see it more in Zinchenko and Zeus and stuff like that. So I think he needs to go and get like maybe three, four more players like that as well. So, yeah. But yeah. All right, we're drawing to the end soon, innit? So one other question that we wanted to ask is, what is the biggest thing you've learned about the football industry as a whole? <sighs> the football industry as a whole doesn't owe you anything. Owes okay. You absolutely nothing and you've got to, you got to keep on pushing yourself to get there and even when you're there you're still not there i can put it that way like even when you get your first contract you're still not there you still got to keep pushing because um it's easy for you to to fall out of the industry just like that and once you fall out fall out of the industry it's very very difficult to get back get in back the in industry. okay why yeah i was just about there's to not enough play um not enough people that care i would say um the industry is is a business now so because it's a business why <laughs> do you say now wasn't it always a business i think in the beginning you got players and agents and clubs that will show more interest it wasn't so much more it wasn't about money 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 yeah but now it's everything is money like if you got look at united they want to get rid of the owners and bring in these Qatar owners. <laughs> why is that? The money that they're going to bring in. Of course, we, we know why. They want to become a Chelsea so City. It's got to be, you look at Chelsea and City, same thing. Like The money is there and you can't hide it. So because you the money's there, it's an investment now. It's not investment over five, ten years. I don't know. But it's, 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 it's a business. How can we you know, get better and better and better. And it, 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 it relies on what the chairman and the owners want, ideally, if they want trophies or if they want to yeah. sell back and make more money and st- so on and so forth. So, yeah. And um, so this is not out of the way, but so obviously you, you've seen parts of the industry and stuff like that. Yeah. It's kind of a two-part question, but firstly, would you... so? W- it, would you get like if you had a son would you get your son to play football would you encourage him to play football um <laughs> obviously it's in my nature isn't it? i would want them yeah or him i would want him to play football of course like. and how would you navigate to it because there might be people that are like yeah i'm gonna do the project mbappe thing and that but yeah, how would no, you I navigate through it because you've been in it flow, man. to be really honest with you i would he has to have the passion do you know what i mean like my dad he wanted to make it so much. He wanted to make it so much. And that passion kind of got passed on to me. Okay. And, uh, mm. and even to like my brothers kind of thing. And <laughs> and so once you have that passion within you, you don't need anyone else to keep you. Intrinsic. Yeah, keep you going, keep you motivated to push yourself. <coughs> and you don't have that passion, it's just not there. And so in the beginning, I know... They might find it difficult if I'm I'm talking about if I had a son. Yeah. They might find it difficult, but there'll come an age where they start to love it. Like, they start to love it, and you can see that the passion. Oh, daddy, can you take me training? Or blah blah blah, and then you can see it. And once they have it, it's it's there. Like you don't really lose your passion. Even now, I'm not in in football. I'm injured, but the passion's still there. The drive yeah. to to get back is still there. So yeah. And by the way. W- w- would you ever have an agent again or do you do things by yourself like the yeah, Bruno? So obviously due to <laughs> <laughs> no, due to situations in the past, I don't have it have an agent, but I've learned that I can give mandates so, out. Uh mandate is over a period of time you can give a mandate out to someone that you trust for three, four months and if they're able to produce something in that three, four months, you can give them the cut of the de- uh, of the deal. Oh really? Yeah, so okay. I try to be by myself. I try to, I try to be in control. Okay, yeah. When you're in control, 
there's not many um what's the word it's not like confusion yeah yeah there's not confusion i can say like you told the club what you want the club tells you what you want they can pass it down one layer but sometimes when they pass it down from one two three layers and it comes down to you it's a bit like okay they said this that person says this that person says that and then you're getting this part of the story so me i would um, try to stay like this until i find someone that is trustworthy because it's very difficult as i said i'm not in the industry right now but it's difficult uh, even when you get back in the industry because of how um, ruthless they are yeah so yeah i think i'll try to stay in control of the contracts you look at like kdb now yeah stuff like that. they're kind of doing it themselves so, yeah. nice. and the last one unless you don't have any other questions um Oh, I lost the train of thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. So, obviously, you're in control now, as you were mentioning and stuff like that. Do you think now, compared to before, in terms of, like, the opportunities, like, is there a lot of opportunity to, like, rise up in football now or not? Like, do you get it? Like, for a player yeah. who's, let's say, in a lower league or something like that, mm. is it the same as before in terms of opportunity to rise up or is it that much more difficult or... What I've seen, I think it's it's difficult. It's more, it's more difficult, difficult now. Yeah, okay. I think it's more difficult now. Um, you got the media that say like, oh, if you're a certain age and you're not in a club, it's, it's going to be very difficult. And I think the cap that teams, when I mean the cap, I mean the age cap that teams look at now is um, like 21, 22. Okay. You kind of get past that age, it's they kind of hesitant. Okay. Because even last season, I had like a few teams in the championship, for example, that knew about me, liked me, but said, ah, oh, he's, he's 23, like he's, he's a bit old. Like, so that kind of, I lost that opportunity just because of my age. So it wasn't because of ability, whereas it was just, they wasn't willing to kind of, yeah, take, take, take the, the, take that chance, take that risk. Well, why that though? Sense. Is that to do again with like, because it's a business. Yeah, I believe so. I think it's a business and... But 23 is like... 23 is a good... Well yeah, them. you do well in the they next three you years. They can sell you on. But I think the way that they look at football is 18 to 22. Okay. Like that's the way they see it. And um, you have like a lot of players that they don't break into the first team, but they're in around the first team at okay. that age, 18 to 22. And then after 22, you kind of try to progress and get yourself into, as I said, establish yourself into a team at like 22, okay. 23, where you're, if you're not a regular star, you want to be in a first team by yeah. 22, 23, like your your name or your your number shirt or something like that. So, yeah. Do you think because you've not maybe had like the mileage that a person would have had if they played like, First team from 16, mm. that you can last longer. Mm. That makes sense. What do you mean by like? So, like, you see how, like, um, there are players who are playing Prem oh, yeah. from like the age of 16. They've been mm. running 90 mm. minutes since yeah. they were 16. So their legs are tired by the time they're 25. But, yeah. you, but like, your case is, is a bit different. Or like Vardy and that. Yeah, like, he, like um, he's the opposite. So he. Yeah. He got into the. I think. I think. Gas, the man that you I, think I think. I think when you're like. 16 or 15 and you get your first team debut it's good isn't it like and then i think the reason why they don't really progress and go on is probably just the desire and you get kind of get comfortable um you, yeah you kind of get comfortable and then it's not really you don't really push yourself the same way you push yourself i think in my opinion um but um yeah like it's just the desire i would say and yeah, so. Any question, Richie? Um, yeah. Last question I ask you is probably like in terms of your story. Do you do you believe we need more agents from our community? That's a very good question. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, it is a good question actually. Yeah, I forgot about that one. That's a good question. I think sure, sure. the agents from our community, they got a they. 
I've had I've had someone recently that I've seen at the gym and like, oh, what's going on, Josh? And you told him, and he's from the community, and he could probably help. But it's more like, oh, you didn't trust me back then, so I'm not gonna do nothing for you now. Mm. Okay. So they kind of got that they they gotta have the mentality to like. They first of all they gotta be the best at what they're doing yeah, here in the community. Actually educating, yeah. And they've got to take it seriously. Mm. Like a, a lot of them, they're doing it for themselves. If they do it for the community, because sooner or later you do it for the community, they, for example, the community is gonna give back to you. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. It, that's how it's gonna happen. Yeah. You look at Sancho, for example. He's from the community. Mm. You look at Reese or whoever is from the community. They give back. Yeah whether it's to the agent or whether it's to the actual community. And your name is going to be, oh, I took him out of this community. And you brought him to this, And yeah. brought him here. But they don't see it like that. They think of themselves yeah. first. Yeah. And Makes that's sense. the problem. If they start seeing it like, I'm going to build this community, mm. they are going to be more successful. In long a term, innit? Like long, yeah. yeah, long term. But they don't have the long term mindset yeah. because they're, they're from the community and... <laughs> Let's be real. The community is like I want to get out of the hood. Yeah, that's, quickly, that's yeah. How it is, so. yeah. quick, quick, um, quick money, yeah. quick way through. All right, Josh, nice having you. Thanks for coming. Interview, and this is it from the scoreboard, and we'll have more for you soon. <laughs>